Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Aiken and I am a high school math teacher in Georgia. So today is finally the day that I'm going to go through how to do a flipped classroom. So this is something that's been asked a couple times and I'm not gonna really be able to go through everything in just one video. So I'm gonna actually make like maybe, I think a three part series on how to design a flipped classroom and go about lesson planning as well as implementing in your classroom. Cause there are a lot of details to think about when doing this so it's gonna take a little bit of uh, time to kind of explain so I figured I'd just break it into videos to make it a little bit easier to find what you need so with that if you haven't already make sure you subscribe below uh, that way you can kind of get notifications when I get the X videos up um, so today what I'm gonna work on sharing is just how to set up a flipped classroom what you need to get it started um, kind of figuring out the design of how you want it to work for your classroom um, before you even get into like the lesson planning and video creation so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing when designing a flipped classroom is figuring out how you will present your information to your students. So the idea of a flipped classroom is to do all your notes at home and then be able to spend the class time with your students remediating, intervening with like certain things that they need help on um, and just providing that one-on-one -on -one or small group peer interaction with them. So for my class specifically, I teach math, which means I actually really need to go into detail in videos. So what I use for my videos is a small document camera. So I'll show you that right here. This is actually provided through my school. This is an Apivo. It's, I think, really one of the base models. It's not anything really fancy. So it just hooks up to my computer through a USB. And then I have software that allows me to record. Um, what you can do in different subjects, so for me with math, I need to be able to show myself writing. Um, but in other subjects, let's say you have history or science or even literature, um, you could use PowerPoint. Like if you already have PowerPoints made, there's a way to do recordings where you voice over. Uh, my mom is actually a college professor and she does a flipped classroom design for chemistry. And so she voices over and she's able to record herself in the corner so the kids can like see her talking she can like do her hand motions and make it a little bit more engaging than just like audio over a PowerPoint and so that's way she's able to get information to her students um, so with other subjects it may not even be you recording videos all the time so if you have a video that you have that's really good from some random YouTube channel um, explaining I don't know the different stages of meiosis or mitosis or whatever it might be for science you could provide a set of notes where they use that video and you just design a set of notes around that video so you're not even making one yourself you're giving the link to the kids and the kids are writing down from the video so it's very fluid based on what you need for your classroom um, another example for maybe literature for flipped classroom is assign reading at home they read the textbook at home they come back already prepared so a flipped classroom for literature already might kind of be flipped to begin with just because of how you present the curriculum you can't do all your reading in the classroom so the kids have to read at home and then you do stuff based off the reading you've already learned so with other subjects that's a little bit different so you have to have a plan of how i'm going to present the information so I record all my videos just because a lot of my notes I've already made and I there aren't really already math videos made according to a set of notes. Um, so that's how I do mine. So that is step one, figure out how you'll present your information and what devices you need. So another thing that you'll need to do is figure out how you will then share your video. So I record my videos through a document camera. You could use a phone, you can use the PowerPoint, like your webcam. But now that you have a video, the question is, how do I give it to my students? So the easiest thing for me is to upload to YouTube. So I have my own YouTube channel that's literally called Algebra One Notes. And so this is where I upload all my videos to, and it's nothing really fancy. So I went ahead and shared it on my screen here. So you can see this is just algebra one. That's my, and then it's just a bunch of videos of notes that students will use throughout the year. This way I tell kids to subscribe to it too, just so that way they can get, you know, a notification when they have a new set of notes, but also so they can find it more easily to go back and watch notes if they need to. So YouTube is the best way to implement that, but how are you gonna give the info to your kids? Like how are they gonna access the links and how do they know when they're using what notes for what night? 
So on top of one, finding a platform, so like YouTube to share your videos, you next need to figure out how you will then send out those links to your kids. So this really is dependent on what you use as your school system. So for us, we use Canvas as a website, so I'm able to post everything through Canvas. If you have Google Classroom, you can make Google Slides to share out to the kids. Um, I'm not exactly sure how Google Classroom works. I've never used it, but I actually have embedded Google Slides into Canvas for my own classroom. And so I am familiar with kind of designing. So that's what I wanna show you guys next, how I set up my agenda that is pushed out to the kids so they know exactly what notes they're doing, what day, and they have all the info they need. Okay, so this is my Canvas page. This is, um last weeks that I did with my kids. We as a school system are required to have an overview. So, I mean, if you have an overview, that's up to you of the week. But I have this broken into different tabs for them to click on and it breaks into in-class and at-home assignments. So, for example, Tuesday was a day that they had video notes they quizzed in class, and so that night the students know that for homework they have these notes, so if they forgot their notes packet at school or they lost it, I always link it so they can download it, and then I just embed the video for my kids to have. Now, Canvas is not used by a lot of school systems, so I don't know exactly what you might have. So one thing that I use that can be embedded into any, I think, like software website that you might use for your system is Google Slides. So this is something that I made on Google Slides. This is actually what I started with my flip classroom design was during kids quarantining was how do I send the videos for them to be able to do while they're at home and understand what we're doing. So again, I have a weekly overview. Again, that's kind of optional, but it's good for the kids to see. And what I did, again, I still had it through YouTube, but what I did was I had the topic, the notes that they needed, and then I embedded the video this way. Now this layout is not a flipped classroom design because these are notes that we did in class and their homework was to do a worksheet or do the homework page. But this is another example of how you can maybe set it up is to create a set of Google Slides for yourself, one for each week, and this is where you could embed the video. And then Google Slides can be embedded pretty much any way, any software that or program that you're using because they have this uh, actual publish to web option and then you can click embed and you copy this link and you can put that into any place that you need it through a different website that you're designing or page you're designing and it pops up as an embedded um, page for your kids to see. So when we first had to do digital learning, this is what I use and this would be another option for you to maybe use while you're trying to share information. Okay, so recapping so far, just one, how are you gonna be able to record your videos? How are you presenting information? Two, how are you then pushing your information out to your kids? So it's a lot of planning on the front end, but it's really nice once you've got it set up. So if you're thinking about a flipped classroom, you're gonna have to be very organized on your plan to get this started at the very beginning. But once you know what you're doing, it's so routine that it, it's not hard as you guys are actually doing it. So after this, once you know how you're recording your videos, how you're pushing it out to your kids so they know what they're doing, you need to have a plan for your classroom and what are you gonna do if your kids don't watch the video? So this is where having access to technology would be very important in your classroom. Um, and I know that's not an option for everyone. So whether a flipped classroom is for you is really dependent on how you're able to accommodate kids in the classroom. So. For my school example, we have shared computer labs and I'm lucky to have a computer lab in my classroom, but not everyone has like a computer lab for them in their classroom. So a girl down the hall for me, if she has kids who don't watch videos in her classroom, she utilizes my laptop cart as well. So that's what we use and how we kind of integrate this in our classroom. When we start class, we always have an opening and to take attendance, I just walk around the room with a clipboard and then check off whether they've done it or not. So for example, I'm just gonna hide student names. This is my clipboard that I use and I just use checks if they did it and then X's if they didn't do their video notes and then obviously I mark kids absent as well. So this is how I take my notes. So you need some sort of system to check notes. If the kids aren't doing the notes, it will all fall apart. So you've gotta be very diligent about every day checking video notes. 
If kids did not do their notes, you have got to hold them accountable in your classroom and make sure that they get to it. When you do your recap or you start doing an activity with your kids and they didn't do the video notes, it's not gonna make any sense to them. If they're good at picking up stuff in class, they might be able to understand, but it's not fair to them to kind of punish them and make them, oh, well, you didn't do it, so you're just gonna have to catch up on your own time if they didn't have access at home or something happened or power went out. So my kids, right, they know the routine after openings. If they need to get a laptop, they go to the laptop cart and I'll show you guys that right here. I just have that in my back of my classroom and I have some headphones that they can use so they can listen to it quietly and they can go in the hall or um, stay in here with their headphones. It's kind of up to them. So the biggest thing as well with the flipped classroom, if kids didn't do their notes, it should not be like a shaming experience because we don't know what's happening at home. So I, the first time that kids have to go grab laptops, it's very uncomfortable and you need to make sure you're okay, Johnny, Susie, Erica, Matthew, go get your laptops and reiterate like over and over again. Okay guys, this is not embarrassing. This is gonna happen to everybody at some point. So like, it's not a big deal. I'm not mad at you. We just need to get it done, right? So let's get it done now so we're not behind and kind of make it as like a, hey, I get it things happen, let's get you caught up today, let's do the notes, and then you can join us after. So it's the accountability of making sure they get it done no matter what, but also making sure it's like a safe environment where they're not embarrassed because we just, you don't know what's gonna happen at home, you don't know what their lives are like, so it's not a punishment thing either. So once you know what you're doing and how you're gonna use the technology in the classroom to get them set up, you really are pretty much good to go and you just need to figure out how you want your classroom to be structured. So you know how you're gonna do your notes, you know how, what way you're gonna record them, you know how you're gonna push them out so the kids have access to them. You have a plan for when the kids come to your classroom without notes and it, as some sort of technology for them to access it. And then you need to know a routine for your classroom. So, Oh, one thing also to add for technology, if you're comfortable with kids using their phones to access the videos, be my guest. I did that before as well. I just got a laptop cart this year, so I would like to utilize that, and I don't like phones in my classroom, so I really push them using the laptops to get it done instead of their phones, but phones are an option as well. So with classroom, once you know exactly how you're getting all the information out, it's big to have routine. Even kids who are seniors in high school, they need routine, especially for such like a weird or different type of learning environment like a flipped classroom. So I just use the same lesson planner and I kind of go through and I block off all the things that I need to have prepared for class before like the, the school day starts. So I have the same routine. So I always have an opening assignment. It varies day to day what I wanna do. Sometimes they're knowledge checks and that will be on the board, but I always start off the class with some sort of way to gauge when how they've done their notes and take attendance and recap some stuff. Now, then I have a whole recap section for myself because if they did notes the night before, you've got to review them because kids had questions. Kids maybe already forgot because it's been 24 hours since they've seen the material. So you have to have some sort of recap. I usually, since I'm a math teacher, leave a couple questions blank from the video notes and then just go over those blank questions that I didn't hit in the video for them to do in class with me. So we kind of recap and the kids can ask their questions. So always block off a way to re-engage, re like visit the material. So to freshen what they learn because they've probably forgotten just need their memory to be jogged. So I block 10 minutes for that. Then I have some sort of engaging activity or lesson. So for me being math, it can't always be engaging. Sometimes it has to be just a practice day because it's hard stuff. And then the next day we'll do a really fun activity. So some sort of activity where it's just practice, practice, practice. Some days it might be like a fun game and around the room and escape room, things like that. But that's the bulk of your lesson is some sort of engagement that you wouldn't have been able to do without the flipped design. So you want all your activities to show the kids the benefit of the flipped classroom and like, hey, like because we did our notes at home, like look at all this engaging stuff we can do in class. If you were to just give worksheets, then the flipped classroom isn't for you. You've got to really make sure you're, you're finding engaging activities for your kids. But you know what, that's what teachers pay teachers are for. People have made a million activities that are super fun for kids. And so you can just pull from there if you're not sure exactly what to make. 
And then you need an extension. So you always have to have something planned for the kids who get it right away and are gonna fly through the activity. So a lot of times that could be like a quizzes type game or like a deeper thinking task especially with math, because math is a lot of practice problems to begin with, you do not wanna punish the early finishers by giving them more work. So you wanna find something that's a little bit more engaging for them, um, less problems, more thought provoking of an extension. And then obviously if you do closings, have block off some time for closings, and then this is where I kinda of plan the homework that I would have. So that I think is a lot of information and a lot to digest. So that's all I have for the first video. And then the next one that I'm gonna make for you guys is about how I actually lesson plan. But before you can lesson plan, before you can even get into the like nitty gritty of designing your lessons for a flipped classroom, you've got to have a plan on the front end and know exactly how you're gonna push this into your classroom and then the lesson planning follows. So. I hope that helps. I hope that gives people an idea of like what you need to get started. And um, I'll be making some more videos about what I do to lesson plan, also like my favorite activities and things like that to make the classroom engaging. So please make sure you subscribe, make sure you are able to be notified whenever I have a new video coming out, especially if you're very interested in the flipped classroom, because I'm going to start pushing out a lot of things that are going to be kind of flipped classroom focus and engagement focus in the classroom. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had some very useful information from this. A little boring because it's like the nitty gritty of prepping, but the prep is so important to get yourself centered and just in a routine to make the classroom successful. So thank you guys so much for watching.